Manipur, what happened is, and also in the part of India, what we find is, you know, ever since the India's adoption of the neoliberal policies, no? Because in the 1990s onwards, uh, earlier it used to be this planet economy, more of a socialist pattern, no? But 1990s, it suddenly opened up in, its an economy. Uh, once it opens up its economy, ultimately there is a lot more pressure on our land, no? Pressure on our, uh, on our resource, on our... Um, on our forest, on our water, on our uh, agricultural land, for example, because there is so much of push for expanding trade and economic relationship with the neighboring countries. No, so and in that process, it's not just targeting uh, expansion of trade with the neighboring country, but also targeting our the very resource within our midst. No, so what we find is uh, from 1990s onwards, we find lots more uh, plans for big dams coming in Manipur. So already more than 200 dams are planted in entire northeast. No, in Manipur, uh, almost 15 to 20 dams have been planted. Uh, and then we also find new plans for exploration of our oil. No? Oil and natural gas is coming up, and we also find a lot more big large-scale infrastructure projects coming in. Uh, the highway, the Asian highway, the Trans-Asian railway. So all these are coming in a way which will exert a lot more pressure on our land. No? And already we find uh, uh, forced displacement. Uh, land grabbing of our agricultural land of our forest no uh, and that is one of the biggest concern it's not just impacting because of this development project per se but also because of the conflict situation already persisting in Manipur it also provides the state uh, an additional um, uh, you know advantage no to use a conflict situation to pro promote and pursue this kind of unsustainable and large-scale development no? so when there are push for big dams in, in, in our place for example you will find a state using its entire machinery, you know? so you find the uh, state military machinery, for example, the entire bureaucratic machinery, the entire political machinery has been used to promote uh, those corporate interests. You know? uh, so a, a, a major challenge in our, and concern in our case is more of the corporate expansionism. You know? So we find a lot more of the private multinational corporate bodies uh, increasingly taking up our land you know, uh, without taking the people's consent, without uh, looking into any impact on the community. You know? so, those are, and also because in Manipur, most of the uh, communities are indigenous and tribal communities. You no, know? we, we have direct relationship with the land in terms of the survival. You know, for the livelihood, for their sustenance. Uh, so that sustainable livelihood is or way of life to a certain extent. You know, it's been completely altered drastically and suddenly. You know, and that is something which is very concerning and alarming at this point of time because the increase. Um, uh, corporate expansionism has, incre uh, has increased, uh, uh, you know, land grabbing by the multinational corporate bodies. You know? And our concern is like, um, it's not just a human rights violation committed with the state uh, direct uh, participation, you know, but then there is no accountability in that process. You know? There is no process to seek justice uh, remedy. So in our context, one of the biggest challenges is like, so when you talk about sustainability, uh, it's not just about um, maintaining sustainability for our, you know, not present and coming generation, but also it's, it's also about ensuring justice, no? ensuring accountability, you know, whereby there is a mechanism to, to, to seek redressal. Uh, you know, I think there is something which is missing in our part. No? Uh, so when we talk about sustainable development goals here, you know, one of the reasons why we are here is also to carry the voice from uh, the, the communities, no? um, uh, and also the alternatives that people have to offer, uh, and also to come up with a clear message here that, you know, when you talk about sustainable development goals or whatever sustainability you talk about, it should not be something that promotes corporate interest, no? it should not be something that rigidifies privatization of people's land, you know, corporatizing people's land without any accountability or without any regulatory mechanism, you know, and it should be something that should be sensitive and compatible and um, and 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 you know and which is um, applicable to the rights to the wish and needs of the communities no or, or especially those people who lives with the land you know who has direct relationship with the land in terms of their survival and i think that is what we are trying to come up with a message no and whatever development process either uh, implementation or projects or process whatever uh, implemented uh, under the sustainable development goal it should not lead to uh, persuasion of the very development model, uh, you know, which is pursued in our land and region. No? And we wanted them to desist any form of corporate favorit uh, favoritism oriented kind of uh, development process. No? So, the, uh, you know, and th that's where the issues of respecting community rights, uh, respecting human rights based approach to development, you know, and also, uh, and we also want a, any development process to lead to uh, ensuring accountability, you know, for all development actors. And I think that is one of our fundamental uh, concerns in our case. 
In, in Manipur, what you find is like, you know, the, the economic activity, it's women has a major role, no? but in terms of production of uh, the whatever traditional uh, agriculture food or, you know, but, and in terms of uh, the economic activity, most of it is sustained by the women. No? So like if you come to Manipur, the market is entirely run by women actually, traditionally. You know? It's a woman who produces, it's a woman who distributes, it's a woman who sells. No? You know, and, 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 and the market space is for, for women, you know? so which means they have uh, a greater, far greater role in rights. No? Uh, so, but now with the kind of new liberal market force coming in, when there is a lot more corporate expansionism in our land, you know, and these are more for the profit for bigger corporate bodies, no? So they see our land, our resource, our, um, our uh, even our people as source of profit, no? So ultimately it ends up uh, a process where it leads to a lot more land alienation, you know. When you have land alienation, it deprives our people, you know, especially women, from direct relations with land. So ultimately, that, that traditional economic role of women is increasingly being marginalized. marginalized no? So I think this is one of our biggest concerns because when the, the government of India wants to expand trade with Southeast Asia, it talks about a trade economic process which is, which, which is very, uh, you know, which is, which is quite incompatible with the traditional economic model that persists in Manipur, you know, which is more based on relations with land and more, under, more I mean, at least more sustainable management of land resource, no? So it talks about a contemporary resource which, six, which looks into everything as source of profit, no? which, which doesn't uh, care about the rights of women, the role of women in the economy, for example, uh, and also the impact on the environment or impact on uh, our economy or social uh, aspect. No? Uh, so, so that is something uh, which led to uh, increased impact on women in, in, in various multiple forms. No? So the, uh, the ultimate challenge is like because of the inequality, because of this development model, because of the marginalization of people, uh, and also the displacement of women from the very economic model. No, uh, ultimately it led to a lot more violence against women. You know, uh, because women, when they have the economic role, at least, you know, I mean, at least, at least to a certain level of empowerment. You know, so in Manipur, at least women uh, have certain level of, uh, I mean, certain rights. No, but once they are disempowered from the economic role, so then. You know, then women, the perception there, you know, it becomes very different suddenly, you know. So the level of violence again, against women in Manipur within the domestic, uh, within the community setting has increased actually, you know, not just from the state, you know. I think the, the larger impact is on the traditional rights and role of women in the economy in Manipur. And that is something which has not been considered by the contemporary uh, economic process. The, there are two aspects with the sustainable development goals, you know, because before the adoption itself, we are trying to push for a human right based approach to, you know, that respect that is sensitive to the to the adverse realities that persist within the community, you know, that is one part. So we try to push for uh, human rights, for accountability, for greater justice to ensure that the current uh, problematic uh, uh, development model has been altered, uh, has been changed, you know. So that is one aspect. The second aspect is now it is adopted, you know, there are some progress and there are other concerns, several concerns. But now, ultimately, it's going to be uh, implemented at the national level, at the local and regional level. No? So the challenge is now, how do we ensure that whatever is decided here, uh, whatever achievement here is being translated in that context. No? And in India, the biggest challenge is like, in the participation is one of the biggest challenges. No? Because the government, in most of the development process, exclusion is, you know, exclusion is something, one of the biggest challenges. No? Because in the formulation of uh, India's position, for example, there is, uh, you know, there is a big concern is the, 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 the involvement of the civil society groups, you know. But that very concern it persists for the implementation, for the review, for the monitoring, you know. And I think that is where still, that is a murky area again. Uh, so, in fact, there are groups who tries to, in fact, we are also trying to push the government you know, to ensure that uh, the civil society groups or the communities are taken on board, you know. Because ultimately, this sustainable development goal has to be translated into national uh, policies, and you know, and the formulation has to ensure that people's participation is respected, you know, so that their views, their realities, their concerns are addressed. You know, I think that's a bigger, bigger challenge. Yeah. Manipur, one of the biggest, uh, one of the key uh, struggle is against land grabbing, you no, know, by corporate bodies. Like we, one of the, one of the, some of the challenge, uh, some of the struggle is against big dams, you no. Know? So we have this uh, campaign against. Um, Tipaimuk Dam, for example, it's a 1,500 megawatt dam. It's a, it's a quite a huge dam. Um, uh, because of the community resistance, uh, the dam cannot be built. 
But then there are other dams like the Loktak project, which has already submerged more than 80,000 acres of our agricultural land. And right now, the biggest con uh, controversy is, is the Mapitil Dam. No? So we are, you know, we're trying to mobilize the community to ensure that uh, the community's rights and concerns are addressed, you know, and to desist from submerging the land or forest and agricultural land. So that is an ongoing process. No? And now the government is also planning to. Uh, uh, to build more than uh, around 15 dams. No? And th there is a new policy called Manipur Hydro Power Policy 2012. So under this policy, they want to build dams all over Manipur. No? Uh, so that is one. Uh, so at the policy level, we are also challenging the policy level. And also the project level, uh, what we do is like those dams which are already commissioned long time back no? and which are underperforming, which are failed, which are creating more problems for the community. We are challenging uh, those uh, commissioned dams to review for their uh, compliance with uh, human rights standards for their environmental rights, no? So that is one aspect. And then like for the dams which are under construction, you know, so we are challenging them, the government, to ensure that communities' rights are respected uh, and to ensure that uh, whatever applicable environmental standards, you know, are integrated. Uh, so that is second aspect. And third is those dams which are planned, no? Uh, uh, we are able trying to mo mobilize community as, mu as much as we can, no? Uh, to ensure that their rights are respected again. So there is one aspect. And in terms of alternatives, you know, when we say we say no to dam, no, uh, it's about energy. You know, most of the dams are planned for energy, for hydropower project, uh, for power, no, uh, to for irrigation, but for uh, for water supply, no. But most of them are for power, electricity, you know. So what we're saying in Manipur is like uh, we when we when you look at Manipur in northeast, you know, like if you see northeast. Uh, we are generating power which is beyond our surplus, no? You know, like we are at least, uh, if you see, there are more than around more than 10 functioning uh, power projects which are generating more than uh, what we require, no? So, which means like we don't need to generate that additional, you know? And now the plan is to build um, another 200 dam which will generate more than 30, 30 times what we actually require, no? So, the ultimate issue is like for whose purpose are these big dams are planned, no? So ultimate realization is like it's more for the corporate interest, for the corporate power. It's not for the people, no. And we are going to sacrifice our land or whatever resource, our forest, for the corporate profit, no, or corporate interest. And I think that is something uh, which we are uh, denouncing and which, uh, which we are saying that that's the unsustainability part, no. Uh, and in terms of alternatives, um, in Manipur, despite the fact that we generate, uh, generate electricity, we don't get electricity, you know. That's the biggest concern, and we and we have one of the more most of the highest power setting all over, no? Like you get power today, you don't get power tomorrow, you know? uh, And then it's quite so like we get, because of the situation, because of the limited power supply, what people do is like, people are going for solar. You know, the small cheap solar units, which can at least light uh, our homes, no? And in Manipur, unlike uh, Manipur, we don't use that much of refrigerator or air conditioner or whatever, you know? So our energy, uh, use of this so-called so appliance and all is very minimal, no? So which means our energy consumption is very low. You know, the very lifestyle, the way of life is still, you know, low energy oriented kind of way of, I think that is something that we can still promote, no? And because of the uh, uh, unavailability of power, people are going for solar, the smaller units, no? Affordable ones. And I think if you go to come to Manipur, almost every family has a solar unit, no? Small ones. So at least for lighting purpose, you are using it, no? So what, what, what you are going, saying to the government is, you know, we people already come up because of, I mean because of the circumstances, people are already opting for uh, an answer consciously or unconsciously. You know, so we are asking the government instead of building those big dams, why don't you support the, an initiative that's already coming from the people? No, you know, and now the you know you, you try to assess what is the uh, needs of the community, and based on it, you try to I mean if you, you you try to support them through subsidy or whatever you know, and then try to generate which we require. You no. Know? Then we don't, if, and if you go far by that, and then Manipur also has the potential to generate more than from micro you know, because of the terrain, because of the geography, because of the water, you know, we, there is so much potential to generate micro power units, no? So that is another option that we can go for, you know, without destroying our land or environment, you know? So I think that is something, and in fact, the go, one of the government department, Manireda, Manipur uh, Renewable Energy Depart Agency, you know, they, they are actually going for that, no? So why don't they promote which is feasible in, in, in the context of Manipur, no? both solar and hydro, you know, with that uh, mini, you know, with that, I think we can at least uh, sustain, uh, you know, and uh, like Manipur, Loktak project is there, is generating more than 105, no? So whatever is there and based on the people's needs, you know, so that's why it's very important to define our development discourse uh, 
according to the needs and wish and you know uh, according to the local situation as well no? so based on that uh, aspect we don't need to uh, build this big big dam which will which are planning to generate uh, more than 20 times 30 times what we actually require no? and you know that is all only lead to co corporate plunder of a land which also the government is trying to improve the power situation because the World Bank and everyone is, you know, power is one area where there is so much of uh, financing from the the international financial institutions. No, so the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the Japanese Bank, these are all trying to harp in on the power situation. No? So they're facilitating these corporate bodies to exploit and plunder and whatever loot or land resources. And again, there is an accountability part there again, you know, because there is no uh, they can. A regulatory mechanism which people can go to seek justice. No? I think that is a big concern. Manipur is right in the middle of South Asia and Southeast Asia. No? Because for World Bank and ADB and the Asian Development Bank and the so Japanese ADB Bank, ADB. yeah, they are all involved in the power sector and they, they, they play a complementary role. No? So what the World Bank did is like they will facilitate this uh, facilitated loan for the transmission, high voltage transmission and distribution line. No? So which will connect Manipur with Southeast Asian countries with other parts of India, you know, and then with Bangladesh, with Nepal, you know. So what, because if you want to build dams, infrastructure, transmission and distribution lines are very important, no? I mean, that's the infrastructure that will, uh, you know, legitimize uh, or, 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 you know. So the World Bank is directly funding that infrastructure, you know. So if you have that infrastructure, it's easy to build dams, no? So, you know, and then ADB is now is supporting power sector privatization in the region. So like in Manipur, uh, mo like the power po uh, policy and also the, there are other electricity regulation, for example, these are all under uh, ADB's guidance. No? So what happens is like uh, they complement each other, you know, and then the Japanese bank, they are directly funding dams, no? like in Meghalaya, they are funding dams, you know? and the Jap uh, in Manipur also, there is a water supply project from the Mapithil Dam, and uh, which will come to Imphal Town. No? So that is supported by the Japan International Cooperation Agency. So, you know, the, the corporate, pl corporate plunder or corporate uh, effort to, you know, ta to target our land and resource for their profit is also facilitated by this, uh, you know, financial institutions. There are alternatives offered by the community, you know. Like I was talking about solar, almost every family in Manipur uses solar because of the compulsion, no? I mean, and this is not the kind of solar that people use in Europe or US, no? It's a small one, like 300 uh, uh, Indian rupees or 400 Indian rupees, 1,000 Indian rupees, like it's hardly uh, $10, uh, $20, no? Five, $10 to $20, you can get at least uh, a unit which can, you know? Which uh, uh, can be used for yeah, the bar. Yeah, at least, you know, so I think that is something like if you go, if you come to Manipur and see Nook and Corners Manipur, you'll find solar units, small ones. And these are affordable and reliable and quite, uh, you know, accessible to the community. I think that is one option which uh, the government can, you know, uh, as I talked earlier, the the low low consumption, low energy consumption oriented way of life. You know, yes. you, I mean, it's we can't even compare the kind of energy consuming, you know, because we do, I mean we don't use that kind of plants. You no, know? I mean the the way of life, and if that happens, like if you go to interior parts when you put, even there, you know, because it's a simple way of life. You no. Know? And I think that is more sustainable as compared to the high consumption oriented way of life in other parts, you know. So that is one part. And, you know, when you talk about the way forward, I think if you discuss, if you involve people, if you involve communities, and I think there are feasible solutions, you know, feasible way out, you know. So I think that is something which the corporate bodies and also the government refuse to do, you know, for whatever reasons, you know. And um, I think that that is the biggest uh, tragic, tragic part, you know. And if ever you, 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 you engage people, you engage community because there are, there's a lot more knowledge there, you know, there's a lot more traditional knowledge there and I think uh, that is a very important way forward.